Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If it's your first time here, subscribe. There's awesome content here. Like, hit the notification bell, leave a comment. I try to get to your comments, but yeah, we're a growing channel and I appreciate you guys. So if it's your first time here, just hit the like, subscribe, it doesn't hurt. Um, but Today's video is back on the X5SA Pro. I've been getting a lot of questions about it. Plus I did some update to it, which I wanted to share with you guys. Um, so without no further ado, I don't want this to be a long video. So let's get right into it. So first and foremost, um, it's not a highly modified X5SA. I try to keep everything as stock as possible. As you can notice, the only thing I've modified is the extruder area. Um, the uh the housing um a couple of stuff you already noticed but i'm gonna run through the mods real quick so that way um i can answer you guys thoughts and questions um so the, the mods that i've done is um of course not the stock board i'm running a scl 1.4 turbo with five 2209 stepper driver um those are from enron or everyone the way you say it um so they don't have the diog pin for sensorless omen, which I don't care. I'm not using sensorless omen on this. It's gonna always be the switch. Um, what else? Um, I'm, I was using a BMG. Um, I'm using BMG gear still, but I was using the stock BMG housing. Um, I had a different type of fan duct. I can't remember what it's called, but it was on Thingiverse. But I decided now to go with a new uh, extruder. This is called the Superfly, um, and this is on Thingiverse. Um, it, um, someone also designed a fan duct around it. So that's why you see this, this ducting, uh, set up around it, which was pretty cool. Um, so I went with this cause it claimed to be lightweight. And to be honest, it is kind of lightweight because there's not much going on. It's very simple. Just the extruder portion, the BL touch, a 30 millimeter blow up fan and a, 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 uh, part cooling fan. That's it. Very simple, very light especially for quartz wide this is this is money right here um so uh modify the z so no more of this um the stupid uh what's the name that they had with it sorry <laughs> but they had the the what do you call it now the stabilizer there was stabilizer mounted here to hold the the rods in place that's a bad idea guys because like i said some of these lead screws are not straight so take that off take that up if you take that off that alone will improve your print um improve your the banding on the print all that stuff um i've mounted a a anti z wobble mod so basically it decouples the lead screw from the bed so the lead screw is no longer attached to the bed anymore okay it's just floating basically and what that what that allows is for just the bed going up and down without the lead screw introducing any wobble in the bed even if there's a wobble right so it, it helps a lot and it fixes all of the banding issue um mounted my uh spool roller at the top only reason why is because the way i had it it wasn't feeding properly and my extruder would tug on it and that tug will cause some layer some layer inconsistency because it's tugging on the um the filament so i mounted my filament make sure there's no resistance as you can see it's freely moving and so that will also help to improve your print a lot too as well so keep that in mind um so the new mods that i've added is i got a nine millimeter uh thick aluminum 
plate. It's 6061 aluminum. Um, it's quite, it's a bit heavy, no lie. When the motors are off after a print, it, the, it literally dropped. I don't have any anti-backlash nut here and I don't think I wanna add one only because it's working so fine. I know that will help to kind of prevent the bed from dropping, but it doesn't really bother me. And what I might try to do is put a, a, uh, a uh, macro in my config to prevent the Z from turning off after the print is finished. That way it doesn't drop right, you know, right out the rip. Maybe put a delay on it, like maybe an hour or two. So that way the prints can cool off, the bed can cool off. I can pull it off before it even decides to drop or something. So, but yeah, that's the only downfall with this, but the bed is practically flat, flatter than the, the stock bed. Um, it's being powered by a 400 watt Kenovo uh, silicon heated bed. It's 24 volts. I didn't want to use the SSR in this case. Um, and then it's it's being powered by external MOSFET down there. If you look, there's an external MOSFET. Um, it's 25 amps and it's plenty enough to power this baby. Um, so yeah. And then of course I added a, um, a Amazon uh, Fire HD 7 tablet here. And um, it's being powered by the board. There's a little spare five volt header on the board that I'm using to power it. Um, and so that way I can see the fluid and clipper uh, interface fluid. Um, so I can see all the stats and stuff like that and can control the printer and all that stuff from, from the interface. So, and then I also printed out the Voron Legacy housing. I really like the housing. I got rid of the metal housing um, and I bought a new power supply as well, 350 watt meanwhile power supply. So other than those few changes, that's it. I didn't do anything else and everything else is pretty spot on it's printing amazingly amazingly well um as you can see i'll show you a proof of the print look at that the print quality let me try to zoom here hold on here let me clear this camera come on clear up there we go so as you can see the print quality is insane look at that that's and this is ptg guys ptg not much stringing at all ptg and look at the quality of the walls. So like I said, it's pretty impressive. Really, really impressed with this machine. Um, I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not gonna modify it and mess with it anymore. It's pretty much in its final form. It's print. It prints pretty fast. Um, I, I'm running it conservatively at about 3,500K acceleration all around. Um, 150 millimeters a second. Um, 10,000 on the travel, because I wanted to zip across stuff make it look you know that help print um help with the uh speed up your print with the travel but yeah but it's it's really nice right now everything is just working perfectly um seamlessly and um i couldn't be even more happy with this machine like i said very very good machine you just got to take your time and nail nail the problem areas and that's it so again for me the problem area was the stock extruder garbage went direct drive problem here was a z uh lead screw issue fixed that problem no problem next problem for me was the bed the bed was very thin and warped easily fixed that problem so that's it i just fixed the problem that all it um that needed to be fixed and in total um this machine cost me what if i add the mods no more than 700 bucks i only paid an extra 300 dollars in mods if that it probably be less i'm just overestimating but probably less than that and it's a great machine great great reliable machine so i just wanted to share that with you guys um i just want to keep this video short just want to update you guys if you guys have any questions let me know um also just wanted to show this out i'm not using stop motors these motors are stepper online 92 ounce stepper motors they're very beefy very torquey um they have a lot of torque in them so this sucker can zip like insanely fast if i needed it to um it's already pressure advanced it's already um input shaper tuned so it can print insanely fast but again i'm just keeping it conservative right now because i'm not running a race or anything like that but again if i wanted to speed up the print i could but yeah it's running those motors are really nice because again i if i if i need a torque it's there i'm also using 16t pulleys instead of 20 so a higher a slightly higher resolution on my x and y so yeah, very, very good printer. I have no issues with it. 
super impressed with the quality spitting out with PTG and, a and uh, PLA. Um, I'm not planning on enclosing at all because I have my uh, my Iron Man theme V1.8 right now printing out uh, a V2.4 parts. I have that to do that job. Plus I also have the, uh, I need to do a little review on this too. I also have the Vaughn Legacy over here, um, which I will do in another video. But yeah, I'm super satisfied with this guys. I, I got no complaint. Like I said, in my opinion, it's a good printer. If you're just willing to do the right mods and not waste your money, just the right mods. And the mods are work on your Z axis, get a new bed if you can. If your bed is not warped, great. But if it is, get a new bed. Uh, get your extruder set up um, and route your your spool holder in a very uh, smart place so that way it feeds nicely and other than that you should be good to go oh and change the power supply absolutely trash power supply they give you get a better power supply and that's about it the monitor board is optional you don't have to get a new board but if you if you definitely want good features I would definitely get a new board something newer with 2209s because those are king right now. Those stepper drivers are awesome. Um, but yeah, that's that's really it, guys. So <clears throat> I just wanted to share that with you guys. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video. There's more to come. Remember to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, put it down in the comment. I try to return um, your uh, answer as fast as possible. Because um, this is a community, guys. I love this community. I just want to share my knowledge with you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.